Hey guys, I'm gonna explain the answers to the quiz I posted on Instagram yesterday. This quiz is based on my video on how to identify different types of dementia. If you haven't watched it yet, please check it out. Question number one. Which of the following presents with early personality changes? Alzheimer's disease, frontotemporal dementia, Lewy body dementia. The answer to this question is frontotemporal dementia. In this disease, there are big bodies deposited in the frontal and temporal lobes of the brain. This is why this disease is also known as pig disease. Frontal lobe involvement results in personality changes, while temporal lobe involvement results in aphasia. Patients with Alzheimer's also have personality changes, but this happens later in the disease as compared to frontotemporal dementia, in which personality changes take place early. Lewy body dementia is associated with fluctuating cognitive impairment, visual hallucinations, and tremors. Question number two. Patients with Down syndrome are at a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Which of the following is the greatest risk factor? Option A, because they have learning disabilities. Option B, smaller size of cranium. Option C, extra chromosome copy. The answer to this question is option C. The ABP gene codes for amyloid precursor protein. Accumulation of beta amyloid in the brain is one of the main pathologies involved in Alzheimer's. The ABP gene is present on chromosome number 21. Since people with Down syndrome have an extra copy of the chromosome 21, they're at a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's. Small size of cranium is not a very significant risk factor for Alzheimer's. Although learning disabilities can predispose people to Alzheimer's, it is not a very strong risk factor as compared to having an extra copy of chromosome 21. Question number 3. A 55-year-old male patient presents with jerking movements of his limbs. His daughter also reports that he has been behaving differently. The patient's father also had similar symptoms at the age of 62. What is the most likely diagnosis? Option A. crutzfeldt jakob disease. Option B. Huntington disease. Option C. Pig disease. When there's a patient who has dementia and jerky limb movements, think of Huntington's and crutzfeldt jakob disease. The difference between the two is that the jerky movement in Huntington's will be continuous in nature, while the movement in crutzfeldt jakob disease will be intermittent. Also, patients with Huntington disease will have a positive family history, while those with crutzfeldt jakob disease are less likely to. Pig disease will also have personality changes, but jerky limb movements aren't a characteristic feature of this condition. Question number 4. Gait disturbance, cognitive dysfunction, urinary incontinence. Which type of dementia am I talking about? Option A. Frontotemporal dementia. Option B. Lewy body dementia. Option C. Huntington disease. Option D, normal pressure hydrocephalus. In my previous video on dementia, I mentioned an easy way to remember normal pressure hydrocephalus. It is by identifying the triad of gait disturbance, cognitive dysfunction, and urinary incontinence. The enlarged ventricle size in these patients compress the adjacent brain tissues, leading to the symptoms seen in normal pressure hydrocephalus. Patients with Lewy body dementia might have gait disturbances, but urinary incontinence is not a characteristic feature. These patients will have hallucination and tremors. Patients with frontotemporal dementia have early personality changes. Huntington disease, as mentioned in the previous question, will have chorea and personality changes. Question number 5. Patients with uncontrolled atrial fibrillation are at a higher risk of developing which type of dementia? Option A, vascular dementia. Option B, frontotemporal dementia. Option C, Lewy body dementia. Vascular dementia is a result of multiple strokes. 
Patients with atrial fibrillation are predisposed to strokes due to embolization from the left atrium. Since the left atrium doesn't beat properly, the blood pools in this chamber of the heart. Eventually, this leads to the formation of clots which travel through the left ventricle, aorta, carotids and finally reach the brain. The clot will disrupt the blood supply to the brain tissues resulting in a stroke. Multiple similar incidents could lead to vascular dementia. Frontotemporal dementia is associated with accumulation of pig bodies. They aren't related to strokes. The main pathology of Lewy body dementia is the accumulation of alpha-synuclein. Strokes aren't associated with this type of dementia. Fun fact, patients with atrial fibrillation are also at a high risk of developing Alzheimer's. This wraps up the explanation video. If you learned something new from this video, please give it a thumbs up to show me your support. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos, quizzes and study tips. Stay safe and stay happy. Thank you.